Today is a special Sunday. Today is Word of God Sunday. Word of God Sunday. It's also ecumenical because the sacred scriptures are basically part of every Christian denomination. And so we share, share the power of the word with all of our fellow Christians of other denominations. And so when we think about the word, there is a tremendous amount of power in words, communication, how to say something, how not to say something, connotations, denotations. What do you mean? What are you saying? Or oh, that was beautiful. Poems. All kinds of, well, music, words. We can use words in coming to understand the importance of what it means to be a person of faith. Because we have a foundation, and that foundation, of course, obviously, are the sacred scriptures, the Bible. And so it is an obligation of every Christian, for the most part, to pray every day. Maybe say, it doesn't have to be long, but you know, to say something, maybe get a, say a prayer and get up every morning, say night prayer. You know, of course, as a priest and the deacon Jack there, we're obligated to do the office, the liturgy of the hours. And we're obligated to do that by, by ordination. You're not obligated to do that, <laughs> but you can if you want to, if you don't look into the liturgy of the hours. There's actually an app for it. There's an app for that. You know, look, look at that. It's kind of pretty, it's pretty interesting. It's a structured way of prayer, but everybody can structure their own way of prayer. So we can spend time with Jesus by immersing ourselves in his word. Well, that's what we're doing here today. And so in some way, we can actually do that every day. At some time, when we take a little time out, time to reflect, to collect our thoughts, so to speak. And we hear these words from the scripture. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. Now that's a few thousand years ago, but it's just as applicable today as it was back then. Because sometimes it seems like we're living in a land of doom sometimes. It seems that way. You know, we can get that perception. If you listen to the news in the morning, I listen to the news. I feel like I'm obligated to listen to the news every day. Man, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. It's kind of gloomy in some ways. But you know, you gotta, you gotta keep somewhat of a positive attitude towards life, you know, and not get overwhelmed by the news. But it is good to know that there's something going on out there and that there are some people who live in spiritual darkness. We live in spiritual light or we wouldn't be here today. There's got to be that little light of mine. There's a little song like that. Not a little light of mine. Cute little song. But it says, it says a lot. Let it shine, let it shine. And so, St. Jerome, a great saint, said this, and it's so true. For every Christian, to be ignorant of the scriptures is not to know Christ. That is really true. If you don't know the scriptures, how can you know Jesus? Because the word is powerful. The word either lifts us up, but then words can tear us down too. That's the power, the power of the word. And so we hear these words from the sacred scripture today too. What had been said through Isaiah, the prophet might be fulfilled. Isaiah. Isaiah says something thousands of years ago, even before Jesus. There was a light in that prophet, in that man. There was something shining so deep within his soul that he became a prophet of what was to come. 
what had been said through Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled. God's plan. The scriptures, the word of God, can comfort us. A lot of people take a lot of comfort in the scriptures. They can convict us because it points out our sinfulness, our fallenness. But at the same time, it can lift our hearts to heaven. The spiritual gifts of the Holy Spirit, the fruits that come forth from it. It can bring us to humble repentance. And it can lift us to our feet in joyful worship. Evangelicals, Pentecostals, they, they know that. And so there is always that sense that there's something that happens that animates a person to be joyful. And that, of course, we believe is, is the Holy Spirit. And so really, we can experience God's word coming to life in us. Something happens to our souls. If we, we need to recognize we have souls. The world dismisses that. Well, you know, if we have a soul, why isn't it like our lung or liver or spleen or whatever? You know, so it, 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 diminishing the sense of, well, you know, if you can't measure it, then it ain't true. And so the soul which animates us is this whole sense that something comes alive in a person. When they have a conversion experience, there's something happening there that's more than just mental, something more than just words, something more than just acting a certain way. Something happens to the soul that changes that person's life. And the evidence of that is what happened to St. Paul. St. Paul was a nasty guy persecuting all the Christians, wanting to go round them up, you know. He was serving God by doing that. Get rid of them Christians, troublemakers. And then one day, something happened to his soul, and he completely changed. Now that's conversion, and it's in the Scripture. That can inspire us. And so, praying the Scriptures, now this is what we have to be mindful of. Praying the Scriptures takes time, patience, and perseverance. But the reward is well worth the effort. And so that's, that's what it is, taking the time to pray. Well, we took the time here today. We could have done other things, you know. Some people go golfing on Sunday. You know, they have their special activity on Sunday, time off from work. But we took the time to be here. And so God has called us here today. And so, as a church, we are church. As a church, may, as it says in the scripture today, you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. And that's what we're doing here today. And then we have to remember Understanding the scriptures in real life, in everyday life. How do you apply the scriptures to daily living? How do you, how do you interpret the scriptures in this day and age and its particular problems and challenges, joys and sorrows? How do we do that? What well, is the way that we do that? It's called the teachings of the church. The teachings of the church are the scriptures lived out in the world in daily life. That's why we got the catechism because it directs us. And so that is indeed the scriptures being lived concretely in the issues and challenges of modern life. And so when we take these two powerful ingredients, which constitutes powerful words, the church with scripture invites us to create ourselves. It's kind of an interesting way to look at that. We, cre we are creating ourselves every single day. We're creating ourselves because things change. We have things we need to deal with. And so we're being created in a mystical way, in the ways of the soul. The church with scripture invites us to create ourselves, to shape our souls by our response we make to the word of God is the result. 
And the result is, always, keep the faith, persevere, never give up, pray every day, and look to the future, knowing that the day will come when we will be in glory and we will know and see God as he is. And that's the ultimate goal. Amen. Amen.